From the age of two to the age of six, I watched The Little Mermaid every single day. I was fascinated by Ariel and her life under the sea. I wanted to be her. My parents should have realized early on that I'd probably pursue a career in marine science. About two years ago, I dedicated my future to the underwater world that, as a two-year-old, I was so enchanted by. This newfound obsession, this beautiful world, became my reality in February of 2018 when I applied to a competitive marine science camp called Oceans. To my surprise, I was accepted. In those two weeks, I fell hopelessly in love with the ocean. This newfound obsession led me to apply to the following camp the next summer, Ocean 17. O17, as we called it, was very focused on diving and community service. Through this program, I acquired my Advanced Open Water Dive certification, which just means that I can dive 100 feet down now. While there, I had the privilege of diving three shipwrecks: the Hyde, the Markham, and the Stone Tug. The stone tug was by far my favorite. I felt like I was in a Nat Geo special down there. I finally got my Little Mermaid moment. Now I can never do the open ocean justice, but I'd like to try to put you in my fins so you could get a glimpse at what I was so honored to see. I want you to close your eyes. Imagine you're 21 miles off the coast, nothing around you but clear blue salt water. You jump off the deck into the warm surface water, and you look out, and you can see nothing for miles except the giant waves of deep blue crashing, rocking you back and forth gently. You look up, and the sky is the perfect reflection of the water, no clouds to be seen. You look down, and you can see 80 feet below, if not more. You see the sleek gray barracuda right under you. The massive wings of the rays that span six feet, if not more, the ugly teeth of the sand tiger sharks that go in every direction possible, and the thousands of other types of fish just reflecting the sunbeams. Your mind is at ease as you float there in the middle of the biggest frontier on planet Earth. Now, I invite you to open up your eyes. I was lucky enough to experience this, and while I was floating there, 21 miles off the coast. Above some of the top ocean predators, it dawned on me that this massive body of water that covers 71 percent of our Earth has been barely explored at all. In fact, we've only explored about five percent of it. And to put that into perspective, that's a lot of ocean that we have yet to explore. But What will there be to explore if we don't start taking action now against the impact of climate change and pollution? I'd like to take a step back. Five percent. Five percent of the ocean. That leaves 95 percent undiscovered. But in that five percent, we have made breakthrough after breakthrough in the medical and science fields. During my first year at camp, I participated in a lab where we tested for the antimicrobial properties of sea sponges. Through this lesson, we learned that scientists have found a sea sponge that possesses the necessary tools to reverse the protein fold that causes genetic cystic fibrosis, which is a frequently fatal disease. Not only that, but I talked to a marine biologist who informed me that scientists have reason to believe, with more time and research, we could find the cure to cancer. In the ocean, could you even imagine? Give it five more years, and we could have that cure. These breakthroughs are not only benefiting the medical field, but the science field as well. In a recent Nova documentary, they interviewed a professor of biology who has been studying coral reefs and why only 50% of them have died instead of all of them. Her findings were astonishing. She found that certain coral is better at adapting to changing waters than others. She's dubbed this super coral and is now trying to understand how to use this super coral to bring back the bleached reefs. Now, to give you some background on coral bleaching, it's a very traumatic event that the ocean goes through. It essentially removes all the microscopic organisms that inhabit the exoskeleton of the coral, leaving it bleached or colorless. Because coral has a very specific climate that it thrives in, changing it even slightly can bleach it. Here's a healthy section of the Great Barrier Reef, beautiful, vibrant, teeming with life. 
Now here is a bleached section of the Great Barrier Reef. Vacant. No one is home. This event, without intervention and research, is irreversible. So once the reef is gone, it's gone. This is why it is of the utmost importance that researchers and scientists start to understand how we can reverse and stop coral bleaching. I participated in a service project over the summer, and it proves that it only takes one person to change the environment. We took 200 bags of oyster shells, and we drove to a retirement community, and with about 60 other individuals, we created an artificial reef. This artificial reef helped prevent erosion on the banks by letting the waves break before they got there. On top of this, we planted 2,000 cordgrass plants. Cordgrass connects underground to form a web that locks the soil in place. Both of these things help the community and the environment tremendously, and we just used an answer Mother Nature had already provided. Now, I know my service project isn't very practical to landlock states, but some great things that everyone can do to help out is to just simply be informed and to inform those around you, as well as don't use plastic straws, recycle everything you can, don't litter, pick up trash when you see it, and be informed of what's in your sunscreen. But to be a change, first you have to adjust your mindset on what you individually can do to help our oceans. Most people I talk to about climate change and pollution have the mindset of, I'm one of eight billion. What impact could I possibly have? But when nine out of 10 people have that mindset, the answer becomes quite a big impact. We are the reason the world is in the state that it is in. I want you to let that sink in. Because of the mindset of, I'm one of eight billion, half of our reefs have been bleached, Species are dying off at a staggering rate. The ocean is more acidic than it has ever been. The sea levels are rising, and the water temperature is becoming unbearable for keystone species. We are destroying our home. However, we can restore our home. It only takes one person to start a movement. I mean, look at me. I'm 17 years old with a fear of public speaking, but I thought this issue was so important to me that I decided to get over my fear and now I'm addressing it with you today. You can be the change because one of eight billion can turn into two and then three and so on until we all decide that it's better to stand together than alone on an issue that affects every single living organism on our planet. Thank you.